What's up? Thursday afternoon. Let's talk some fantasy football. Let's get those lineups set for fantasy week 13. And it's the uh, Bills and the Patriots. <laughs> Frank, I was just about to ask you like, if you were excited for the game today. I guess I thought the Jets were playing, but they're definitely not playing. It's two different AFC East teams. So never mind. <laughs> never mind that at all. Definitely not playing, but I will be rooting for the Bills tonight. You know, if we can get the Patriots a couple losses, that helps with the AFC wild card. So let's go, Bills. All right. Tara, Packers fan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey, did Clemson did Clemson have a chance if they had won? Would they have been in the playoff if they had beaten South Carolina? I don't think so. I, I mean, it would have had to be an extremely impressive win. I don't know. College football, those losses, you, you got to get them at the right time. Forget college not football. Advantageous. We hate college football now. It's, yeah, it's college football. football. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we got some soccer on right now. We got some football starting tonight, and we've got all of your questions uh, as we welcome you into the show. And hey, Robert Thomas is here. He's got a question for us. Rashad White, Cortland Sutton, bam, Knight, Jalen Warren, or Van Jefferson. Um, we can update. We can answer this question and then give as many updates as we can about the running backs right now. But who's our running back in our flex? Yeah, I think there's a lot of moving parts right now with this situation. Leonard Fournette practiced today, so that can kind of throw a wrench in things for Rashad White. Uh, Michael Carter did not practice, so that's good for Bam. Uh, and it looks like Jalen Warren is going to play and be active this week. The way things stand right now, I think I would go with Rashad White as the running back. And in full PPR, I would go with Cortland Sutton as the flex. Uh, for me, I would do Jalen Warren as the one. Well, you know, running back or flex either way. But I would do Jalen Warren for sure. Um, so I agree with that. And then I'm kind of stuck between Rashad White and Cortland Sutton. I still lean towards... Rashad White, even if Leonard Fournette is active, it's not the best matchup in the world, but I still think he's got a strong hold on that backfield at this point. So you like Jalen Warren better than Cortland Sutton? Uh, sorry, better than Rashad White? I do, just purely based off the fact that I don't think Najee's going to play. I just am not sure that it's going to be more Warren than Snell. I really don't know what they're going to do there. I mean, I've been having this conversation with everybody who's got a voice uh, on our show, and I, I kind of feel as just a guess. I kind of feel like Snell is going to play kind of the Najee role and probably lead the team in carries, but not by the same margin. So if I were going to project, I would project, uh, let's say, 12 carries for Snell, eight for Warren, and a combined six catches or something like that. So that's my concern about the Steelers guys, uh, but I don't know. But not everybody sees it that way. I guess, Terry, you probably don't see it that way. Maybe if it were a different matchup, but Atlanta, I mean, even if Najee plays, I'm still kind of in, <laughs> like, on, okay. given the matchup. Okay. Um, I, think it, I think it winds up being closer to a 50-50 split. I still have Warren ranked higher than Benny Snell just because I think he'll be a lot more efficient and obviously a lot more explosive and a great matchup. So I have him as a high-end flex, but even if Fournette plays, I think Rashad White would see a little bit more work than him. So I still have him as a top 24 running back for now. All right, so as of right now, Michael Carter has not practiced Wednesday or Thursday. Um, you know, we, we're not expecting Najee Harris, but we are expecting Jalen Warren. I don't think you're going to see much from McCaffrey maybe before Friday. I don't know that for sure. Um, I know Josh Jacobs was limited. He was listed as limited on Wednesday. I, I still think Zamir White has the most upside of all the replacement running backs, unless ETN doesn't play. Then it might be... Jamichael Hasty, but I think we are expecting ETN to play. Um, but I don't know. It's a really weird week, guys. It's like a lot of confusion. And until we get all the Thursday and then even the Friday practice reports, it's going to be a lot of guessing. So you're going to want to come back here on Sunday morning for a little bit more concrete advice. I guess the question is then, a Tara, I'll throw it to you. You know, what do you do if you have Devin Singletary and these replacement running backs? And you've got to decide about Singletary and what's been a really bad matchup for running backs on Thursday night. Or, you know, do you risk it and go with Bam or somebody else? I think I think you still have to go with it. Now, at least with this matchup, I can see where it's a Thursday night game. And New England might struggle to be super competitive. But I think it'll be competitive enough that the game doesn't get away and kind of script out Devin Singletary. So I think you just go ahead and knock it out the way. Go with Devin Singletary because um, everything is too, way too far up in the air. Even with the Christian McCaffrey situation, we don't know who exactly 100% is going to be the backup in that situation. So just go with what you know with Singletary. Go with what you know. All right. Uh, Tony Pollard or DeAndre Swift, PPR? 
I'm going to go with Tony mm-hmm. Pollard. Pollard. Yep, samesies. Half PPR, pick uh, Singletary, Fournette, Jalen Warren. So I was actually just about to uh, address this. The only backup running back for now that I would start over Singletary is Jalen Warren because I don't expect uh, Najee Harris to play as of now. And even if he does, it's not the worst case scenario because Warren will still get eight to 10 touches, something like that. So uh, I would go with Warren of that group. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay. Brandon Cooks or Isaiah McKenzie? (laughs) Man. That is a close one. Let me pull up the, the, I think I have Brandon cooks ranked higher. Mm. It, it's Brandon cooks for me, given yeah. that this, you know, <laughs> given the matchup, it's going to be a little, might be closer than we expect. Yeah. I, yeah. I would go with Brandon cooks as well. I mean, McKenzie obviously had the massive game last week, but he yeah, didn't I don't know that. I hated that before that, you know, I, I bothered me. I know, come on, Adam. On Thanksgiving of all days, like it ruined my Thanksgiving, Frank. It ruined my Thanksgiving. <laughs> I, threw, I threw the turkey across the room. I believe that. I dumped the, the salad, the salad, like all the side dishes in the in the toilet. I was like, just I was disgusted with it. I was really big on Gabe Davis, and it just made no sense that it was Isaiah McKenzie who had this huge game. Adam, um, you're about to see in three, two, one. Goal! You didn't see it yet? More like 30, 29, 28. <laughs> <laughs> I have the worst internet connection. But thank you for rooting, for rooting that. Has Croatia had the ball for more than five seconds in this game? Goal! There we go. <laughs> I, I just want everyone to know the Patriot that Frank is giving us no chance against the <laughs> Netherlands on Saturday. I think he said 5-0, he predicted. I did not say that. And Croatia <laughs> is not playing right now, Adam. So. <laughs> oh, who is it? Oh, Costa Rica. Costa Rica, yeah. Oh, it's okay. close. Like C's yeah. and O's. And- CRC? <laughs> Come on, that could definitely be Croatia. <laughs> Cro- Cro- <laughs> My bad. Um, Carr or Gino Smith? I like Gino this week. I think I have Gino ranked higher. The only thing I worry about with that game, yeah, they're back-to-back. I have Gino one spot <laughs> higher. I just worry if the game gets even slightly out of hand. Do they just keep handing it off to Kenneth Walker? I don't think the Rams are going to push the Seahawks to have to do much, but look, if they get up, it's probably going to be because Geno Smith and his weapons did something. So I'll still go with Geno. Why don't we have more likes, everyone? You don't like all the soccer stuff? We have 21 <laughs> likes. That's not good enough. We're going to give away a Paramount Plus month, a free month of Paramount Plus, if you can get us up to 250 likes, which is a tough ask. It's a big ask. But we can get there. Let's get that started here. We're only at 21 likes. We also have a poll up on YouTube right now. Uh, Damian Pierce against the Browns. Alvin Kamara at the Bucks, Or Saquon Barkley against the Commanders. Oh, I, I know who I'm going with. I'm going to vote for Barkley. How about you guys? Oh, he's in last place. Damian well, Pierce against the Browns. Kamara at the Bucks, Or Barkley against the Commanders. Oh, wait. No, no, no. I read the question yeah. wrong. I was just about to say. <laughs> Come on, Adam. <laughs> no wonder we only have 37 likes. Which running back concerns you the most? Can I take my vote back? <laughs> Damian Pierce, Kamara, or Barkley, who concerns you the most? I still would have voted for Pierce and Kamara's yeah. winning it. How about you guys? Who concerns you the most? I actually, you know, I have Kamara ranked higher than Pierce this week, but I think Kamara actually concerns me the most. Just the single digit carries he's been getting the past couple of weeks. There, that Saints offense has not looked great. I, I look, you can say the same things for the Texans, but the one thing Pierce has going for him is it, it's a fantastic matchup. So, uh, yeah. I actually voted for Alvin Kamara on the poll. Mm. No, I'm like, that makes sense. We he's higher upside, but riskier option. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely risky. I think we've had a Kamara question here. Let me see if I can find it first. I'll do this one Conklin or Hurst. Uh, I really like what I saw from Hurst last week. He had a, I think, season high in all three of targets, receptions, and yards. And he's in that amazing game against the Chiefs this week. So. Who, did, who didn't play last week? <laughs> uh, oh, Jamar Chase, of course, right? Uh, yeah. No, but I, I mean, it's. Fun. I think they're ranked very similarly for Heath, Dave, and Jamie. So anything's fine. I just, I'm not kind of, I'm not really. I'm nervous about Hurst. When Higgins and Chase have been healthy, he's he's almost nothing for fantasy but i'll go with conklin i guess no i'll go with hearst i'll go with hearst i'm, I'm a quarterback guy so uh who would you go with uh tara 
it's hearse for me, but I, but in terms of guys that are super low rostered, I actually am kind of in on Conklin this week to kind of increase his target share. It's been super low lately, but this is a game where I can see it picking up to get over five. And it's a revenge game. It is. Yes. <laughs> this is from Lindsay, a uh, wide receiver already starting Mike Evans. Good luck to you. DPJ, Zay Jones, Slayton, or Jacoby Myers. This is standard scoring. What do you think, guys? Zay Jones for me. But that's a little, <laughs> a yeah. little spicy maybe, but I'm, I'm in on him this week. No, no, I'm with you, Tara. I have Zay Jones inside my top 30 wide receivers. You know, maybe it's a little bit reactionary, but look at the matchup, the game environment inside of the dome, total over 50 in that game. How can you not like Zay Jones in the spot? So, yeah, yeah I'm in as well. Well, Zay Jones has one touchdown this year, so he's not a guy that ever does well when um, he doesn't get a lot of targets. But the Ravens were his matchup last week, and they see the most wide receiver targets in football, so that made sense. The Lions see the third most. Next week is the Titans. They see the fourth most. So this could be a good stretch for Zay Jones. Uh, Singletary, Fournette, or Gibson? Gibson did not practice today or yesterday, so that is the, you don't want to start him over Singletary. He may not play. Uh I think you got to play it safe with Singletary here, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. It's a tough matchup, obviously, against the uh, the Patriots, but you just don't know for sure that either a Fournette or Gibson are going to play at this point. So, yeah, I would go with Singletary. Mm. Not looking good for Croatia so far. Uh, bad start, Frank. Bad start. <laughs> Croatia actually advanced <laughs> earlier this morning. Did they? Yes, they did. Are you a soccer guy? Uh, you know, every four years. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. What I thought, that's what I thought you said, but but you seem so locked in. I, I like the World Cup. You know, it's it's fun. How about you, Tara? I'm not a soccer person. Every four years is more like Olympics for me. So <laughs> oh, all right, all right. Uh remember when we were when we were younger, the Olympics both winter and summer were were all the same year, and you really had to wait four years for Olympics? Yes. And they staggered. <laughs> Good stuff. I think I think that was that happened. Uh, Palmer, Zay Jones, or Miles Sanders, full PPR. Ooh. Ooh. Palmer and Miles Sanders are the two that I have ranked the highest. Sanders does normally does not catch passes, but somehow found a way to catch a catch three of them last week. Uh, tough matchup for him. No, if there's no Mike Williams, I think I would still go with Josh Palmer. It's Palmer for me. I'm even maybe with Michael. I'm a little bit concerned that this is a come back down to reality game for Miles Sanders. Uh, Zay Jones, Mac Hollins, or Deontay Johnson in standard scoring? <laughs> Deontay Johnson <laughs> has the same amount of touchdowns as all three of us combined. <laughs> right now. So even in standard, I know it's a great matchup against the Falcons, but I'm going with Zay Jones. Same. Yeah, but Mac Hollins has the more touchdowns than, than Zay Jones. That is fair. Uh, and that is a great game environment too. The Chargers Raiders, I got a total over 50 in that one. I think I think that's fair. That's a fair point. I'd say I'd say Jones. I'd say Jones. I'm just yeah. um so you like to play devil's advocate, but you don't actually believe what you say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that my job? Yeah, Jacoby Myers is reportedly going to play tonight. Uh does that mean you should start him? I don't know. Let's let's talk about that actually, because he's kind of a tough call. Uh I don't know if people have really paid attention, have noticed, but Mac Jones has had two very efficient games in a row, his two best of the season, over nine yards per attempt. Actually, he was better against Baltimore in week three. Two of his three best games of the season, and they've come against the Jets and the Vikings. Uh, so encouraging stuff there. But it just hasn't really been a very good stretch for Jacoby Myers. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, how, how do you guys, like, where do you have him ranked? Uh, Tara, I don't know. How do you feel about Jacoby Myers? I mean, he was fine last week, given the fact that he missed a giant chunk of the game. Uh, so, so I'm okay with Jacoby Myers as a high end wide receiver three, very low end wide receiver two. Yeah, I have him more so as like a middling wide receiver three. I have him at wide receiver 32 as of now. Uh, obviously, the Bills have given up a, a ton of production to wide receivers this season. We'll see if they can uh, improve that defense with Tredavious White back, but. Uh, they're going to likely be playing from behind. We saw a huge game from Mac Jones last week. I like Myers. I don't love him. I have him just behind names like Zay Jones, Gabe Davis in that same game, and George Pickens. All right. Let's pick two uh, running backs. and a What's up with all the non-PPR questions today? A little bit of a non-PPR role. Okay, two running backs. Pollard, Kamara, Rashad White, Fournette. Uh, I have 
Pollard and Kamara rank the highest as of now. Mm. I get worried non PPR for Pollard, given that Zeke's going to get those goal line opportunities. So I could go with in in standard. I could go with. Uh, hate to go with Kamara in standard, but standard uh, Kamara and then Rashad White, depending on the Leonard Fournette situation. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be powered in Kamara. If both Bucks running backs play, play, it's going to be powered in white for me. If Fournette does not play, I, I guess he is going to play. Uh, but I think he was practicing last week too. I think I'm not sure. He was um, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, a flex then could be one of the running backs or Kirk. Garrett Wilson, it's not going to be DPJ or Sutton for me. Kirk versus Garrett Wilson, very, very tough call for me this week. I don't know who you guys – He they, one of those wide receivers would be my flex, but who would it be? I think it's a super close call. I have them both ranked inside my top 15 at wide receiver this week, but I'm going to go with Christian Kirk again. Inside of the Dome, total over 50 in that game, expecting a shootout. I like them both, but I lean with Christian Kirk. Yeah, same. I hate to exclude either one of them because they're both going to have, or, you know, scheduled to have fantastic games given the matchup, but I lean towards Christian Kirk. Jets are in a dome, right? Yeah, they are going up against the Vikings. And this is definitely, there's nothing statistically based to back this up, but Garrett Wilson just strikes me as one of those guys where when he's going up against another elite wide receiver in the NFL, he's just going to go ham. Like he's going to really just like go out of his way to like have a huge game. So I really think he's going to go off. And, you know, the Vikings have been susceptible to wide receivers this season. Oh, yeah, they're awful. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Christian Watson or Mike Evans in PPR? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> um, I'm not telling you this right now. If Marshawn Lattimore um, plays, Mike Evans is a number three receiver. Yeah, me. it's Christian Watson for me. I, it's weird to say that, but. I, I'm going to go with Christian Watson also. This is one of those things where you won't know, though, right, Adam? Because they play on Monday night. You know, Marshawn Lattimore could be a game-time decision. So Yeah. I mean, I like Watson enough this week against the Bears, and, and they're, you know, they're just, they've been so bad. I think, like, the last five quarterbacks have had a passer rating over 100 against the Bears, including Mike White. Uh, but, you know, Evans, the only thing, I, I can't really figure out what's going on with Evans. I don't, I don't think there is a thing. I just think, I just think he struggled the last few weeks, which happens. So I think he definitely has bounce back potential, but his history against New Orleans is just unbelievably bad. I think in the Marshawn Lattimore era, he scored more than 14 PPR fantasy points one time. And that's something like eight or nine games. It's crazy. Uh, Lattimore just owns him, but he may not play. Uh, uh, yeah. Anyway, it's not, it's not like Godwin is ruining his targets or, or Kate Otten is doing it or something. It's not that it's just, he's just not playing well. He's just like slumping. So I'm yeah. not long-term concerned about Evans, but I'm going to take Watson this week. Yeah, it's so weird because the targets are still there. Nine-plus targets in four of his last five games for Mike Evans. Right. I'm still going to go with him. I have him ranked higher than Christian Watson, but I totally get it. If you just want to take a shot on the upside, I mean, what Watson is doing right now is fantastic. I think over the past three weeks, he has the highest A dot among wide receivers in the NFL. So it's been a great stretch for him. Let me give you one little scary stat, though. Oh, wait. So I play the... <laughs> uh, Tom Brady in his last two games has thrown 29 and 33 passes in regulation to 10 passes in overtime at Cleveland. So I do wonder if they just really want to run the ball a lot more now. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. What do you think about the Packers? You know, Tara, the three best games for Packers quarterbacks have been the last three, which has coincided with Christian Watson. And I mean, I think you could make the case for Aaron Rodgers as like a top five quarterback this week against the Bears, <laughs> considering, you know, he's he is he just destroys the Bears and Watson's making plays and the Bears are so depleted. But, you know, you got Rodgers with the thumb and the ribs. So what do you think about the, the passing game there? So I was actually looking at this yesterday. Rodgers is uh, fourth in uh, passing touchdowns this year behind like Josh Allen and Patrick wow. Mahomes. And I can't remember who the third one, like maybe Joe, Gino? Uh, like it, is it Joe Burrow? Maybe I can't uh, remember who the third one is, but okay. yeah, he's fourth yeah. In, uh, passing touchdowns. So the touchdowns are there. It's the yardage. That's the problem. He hasn't surpassed 300 yards. So that's the big issue there. He's just not getting those, you know, bonuses and certain fantasy points, but the floor is 
very stable. So I don't think he's the worst option to go with. He's been playing through this injury. This is not brand new. We just know more about it. So if you need a stable option that's going to get you between uh, 17 to 20, yes. Do I think the upside is there for like a 25-point performance? No. So it's safe. It's not a bad situation. So he's he's a QB, low-end QB1-ish for me. Uh, yeah, it's Mahomes with 29, Josh Allen and Joe Burrow have 23. Yeah, I I don't know. I'm wondering if it's like a bad touchdown year or something. I don't know what these guys are going to end up with, but we're going to be flirting with, I don't know, not that many 30 mm. touchdown throwers this year. I, I feel like yeah. it's a little low. It's a weird uh, year. Yeah, um, well, we'll see. Okay, uh, let's get some more questions here. Alvin Kamara or Debo Samuel rest of season? In flex, I think they've both been disappointing, but I will take the better offense in Debo Samuel. Yeah, same there. And we, you know, hey, Elijah Mitchell out. Maybe that increases a little bit of rushing opportunity for Debo. He hasn't been really efficient with it, but yeah. a little increase would help. Yeah, Kamara though has. Uh, well, first of all, Kamara has a buy, and Debo doesn't. So keep that in mind. But there's no reason to answer this question. Because you're going to play it by the matchups. But Atlanta, Cleveland, Philadelphia in the fantasy playoffs for Kamara might uh, might awaken him a little bit. Hmm. Debo, Pickens, or Burks, PPR? I'm still going with Debo. Debo, yeah. Um, all right. All right. Let's scroll down and get some freshies. Love the hair, Tara. Best in the industry. Ooh, well, I don't know how <laughs> Jamie's going to feel about that. I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Sarah does definitely. We're honest. I can't have this argument. I can't have this contest with her. Like Thank I can't with uh, <laughs> Schneier. Uh, would you drop Nico Collins for Tyler Boyd? I guess my question would be why. Well, because you're you're handcuffing Higgins, maybe. Uh, I think it's an okay theory. You're never starting Nico Collins over those four guys, so I'd be okay with that. I think I would keep Nico. I like the targets the past yeah. couple of weeks. I would too. I know there's not a ton of upside, but he's he's a more stable option. Oh, um, uh, I have a team name for you. Ready? I never just thought about this. Nico Suave. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like the good 2023 upside with their new quarterback. Well, uh, <laughs> Adam, Adam, how many likes do we have to get for you to sing Nico Suave? Nico so I have to write the I have to write a whole parody for it. We're only at 68 likes, so we're not giving away Jack. Yeah, you know, we gotta get to 250 likes and we'll give away a Paramount Plus free month. So let's hit that like button, everybody. Um Cousins or Dak. Uh I have uh, I have Dak a few spots higher this week. Yes, Dak. Yeah, Dak. Flex Brian Robinson or Kamara or Damian Pierce in standard scoring. Let's get spicy if Gibson doesn't play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I'm thinking. Jeez. In fact, I think I would go Robinson if Gibson doesn't play. Yeah. What if he does play? You could probably make the argument even if Gibson does play, right? I mean, yes. as many touches standard, as yeah. Robinson is getting right now and against the Giants, he'll give up a ton of uh, very high yards per carry to opposing running backs. Yeah, I, you can make the case. I would go Kamara if Gibson plays, but uh, but no, I, I think it's a perfectly reasonable to go with any of these guys. Quite honest to you. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree with that take. If if Gibson plays, I think I'd still go with Kamara. But if Gibson's out, I'd go Robinson. I don't know why I'm even watching this soccer game when I know Frank's just going to tell me 30 seconds before any goal <laughs> happens. <laughs> nope, I won't say anything for the rest of the stream. <laughs> Let's pick two wide receiver. Yeah. Uh, I guess Kareem Hunt is in there too. Pick two and half PPR. Uh, Jefferson, Moore, Deontay. I would go with uh, Deontay Johnson and Kareem Hunt week. Is, is it going to happen? I mean, <laughs> big favorites going up against the Texans is a great matchup. Maybe he gets some garbage time run. I think I would go with Sky Moore. Uh, definitely, definitely yeah. Deontay. I'm on the Sky Moore side just because I I like the direction. I feel like the floor is getting to the place where it could be a solid 10. So and maybe there's some upside in the future. So I'm, I'm Sky Moore. I'll go Deontay and Hunt. Okay. Donovan Peoples Jones or Adam Thielen, Kamara or Rashad White. PPR. Oh. 
Uh, I will go with Kamara if Fournette plays, Rashad White if Fournette does not. And it's a good thing you have that game on uh, Monday Night Football, so you can decide right up to game time. And that other question. Wow, I have Donovan Peoples-Jones one spot higher. Homer. <laughs> <laughs> Same for me. The, <laughs> Jets on the, the Jets secondary is ridiculous right now, Adam. I mean, no matter how you want to look at it, it's not just Sauce Garter. I mean, DJ Reed is playing out of his mind right now. So Yeah, three touchdowns in their last eight games. That's uh, that's wild. Yeah. Oh, okay. Better stash, Beckham or Khalil Herbert? Herbert. Herbert. I guess. Sure. I'm very decisive today. I'm just feeling it. I just got all the answers, <laughs> everyone. Christian Watson or Garrett Wilson? I don't have this. Uh, Wilson. Wilson. Oh, it's Wilson for me. Wilson. All right. Let's. Uh, well, would you drop Sutton or Traylon Burks? Uh, and I need a kicker. Oh, probably drop Burks. I think so. You know, the only thing that I'm hesitant about is that rookie wide receivers typically come on better in the yeah. second half of the season. We're already kind of seeing that out of Burks. Yeah. And what happens if Jerry Judy returns for the Broncos? Going to take away targets from Cortland Sutton once again. Man, uh, I think I would drop Burks, but mm. I don't you feel. Know great. What? You talked me into it. Even though you didn't talk yourself into it, I'm going to drop it. <laughs> oh, yeah, the same logic there. Um, and I was going to look at the schedule. Mm, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of half and half. I, I mean, I don't really I, care about the Broncos schedule because like, they're just the worst, but yeah. I do care about the Judy factor. If Judy comes back, I just, I'm probably, I might drop Cortland Sutton myself. In a how, couple do you, yeah. how do you think this Russell Wilson thing plays out with the Broncos, man? Like, this is crazy stuff. I mean, they're like the defense is yelling at Russell Wilson on the sideline now and stuff. Like, that. I think it might be a little overblown, you know, kind of one incident. I, I remember um, you guys are too young to remember Peyton Manning, but when I was growing up and I was watching Peyton, <laughs> I was watching Peyton Manning. I remember him and Reggie Wayne got into a screaming match on the sideline. And because they were, you know, the best in the world and they were always great every week, nobody cared. So I, I don't know. I mean, obviously the defense is very frustrated. This season's going to be a wash. They'll probably have a new coach and hopefully some optimism next year. Their offensive line is a complete shambles. I don't know how it's going to play. I'm not so concerned about the defense yelling thing personally, but I am concerned about how bad this year has been. But you know what I come back to? Russell Wilson at the beginning of 2021, before he got hurt, he was incredible. I mean, he was playing, like, I think it was only four games, but he was MVP level. So I don't think he's gotten that bad one year to the next. I, I do think he can bounce back, uh, but it's going to have to be with a new coach, I think. Yeah. No, I, I think for sure they're going to have a new coach, but it's yeah. just, can an offensive scheme affect, maybe this is a dumb question, a quarterback that much? Like, if you're an elite quarterback, you're an elite quarterback, right? Like, offensive scheme should not matter that much. So I don't know. And it's a new scheme, so it's hard to, you know, jump back and compare to last year for Denver. But we've got same weapons, same defense. I found it very odd that Teddy Bridgewater averaged more fantasy points than Russell Wilson did. And Teddy played half games multiple times. So that was kind of it's kind of dramatic. I don't it's crazy. I don't know. And the defensive yelling does kind of concern me. It concerns me because Russ just kind of stood there. <laughs> and Hackett just kind of stood there. And no one had any kind of reaction. It was very strange. Yeah. Yeah. They seem like a little lifeless. Do, do you yeah. think, and it didn't really seem to matter much this year, but do you think Javante Williams, you know, how much would he have helped? He played four games. Wilson scored 19.8 against Seattle, had two terrible games after that. Then he had a huge game against the Raiders when uh, Javante got hurt, but you know, he might be their most talented player offensively how much do you think he could have helped russell wilson would it have made a difference i think so i i know there's like a whole running backs don't matter community inside of the fantasy industry but i mean you saw it the first couple of weeks i even think the first month adam you were citing all these stats how the broncos were getting down the field they just were yeah. struggling in the red zone so the offense you know it, it seemed like things were going to come around like there was going to be touchdown regression and really since javante got hurt 
you can't really say the same. I mean, this offense cannot yeah. move the ball, and they have just been absolutely dreadful. I know injuries to the wide receivers, offensive line, but, man, losing Javante kind of really threw things out of whack. So, Yeah. Okay. You know, in Seattle, he – I think he was pretty blessed with his receivers stayed healthy. You know, Lockett like never misses time. Metcalf mostly stayed healthy, if I recall. But when, as soon as Jerry Judy was out, I mean, that's when their season, the last three weeks, they've just been so miserable. Uh, Kamara or Montgomery this week? Montgomery for me. Yeah, I'm going to go Montgomery as well. Oh, a trade question. Should I trade Gabe Davis and Rashad White for Derek Henry, Jamal Williams, and Christian Watson? Yes. I think you missed the oh, Jefferson. You missed Jefferson. <laughs> I, was like, I didn't hear the oh Jefferson. I was like, absolutely, oh, wow. I would do that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Come on, use a comma, for God's sake. Like, like give, me a, give me some punctuation here. Oh, man. Uh, Justin Jefferson gave Davis and Rashad White for Henry, Jamal Williams, and Watson. Ooh. Half PPR. Uh, I think even in half PPR, I'd rather have Jefferson than Henry. Uh, I think I'd rather have Jamal Williams and Gabe Davis in that format. Um, and then Christian Watson and Rashad White is kind of a wash. I think I would stick with the Jefferson side. Mm. I would too. When I oh, look at so the potential of Rashad White and Jamal Williams, uh, again, Jamal, Jamal Williams has massive upside, but he does have those games where he's not giving you a whole lot. So, yeah. And I prefer to have Christian Watson to Gabe Davis, but um, I'm okay with the Jefferson side sticking up. Sticking it's, really, side. it's really close, though. Jeez. It's a lot closer with Justin Jefferson, is what I found. <laughs> <laughs> Jack or Gino this week? Gino. I, think I, I think I have them back to back. I have Dak one spot higher. Dak to Dak. Terry McLaurin or Cortland Sutton? Stop with the standard score. No, just kidding. Just kind of weird. <laughs> uh, McLaurin, I'm, I'm McLaurin. Uh, Terry, yeah. Yeah, I'm going with McLaurin as well. Uh, two running backs. Oh. Mm. Robinson, Pierce, Patterson. Uh, I'll go with the first two there. I know Patterson looked yeah. a little bit better last week, more involved in the passing game. Uh, but the Steelers have actually been pretty good against the run this year. So, Yeah, I agree. Uh, I, yeah. Especially recently, so yeah. And, and Carr, Cousins, Watson, Carr, Watson for me it comes down. This is this is where I would take a chance on Deshaun Watson. I'm not super in on starting him fresh off the bat here, but over these two, I would. Yeah, I think it's really close. I have Derek Carr one spot higher. Again, just really, really like that game environment. I think that game could shoot out Raiders and Chargers. Um, the Browns do have a huge implied team total this week. But I think they're going to run quite a bit. I, I don't know that they want to ask Watson to do that much in his first game back. So I go Derek Carr. And if man, if Deshaun Watson were just facing a regular, like let's say he were facing the in a crazy world, he was facing the Browns. I'm just trying to think of a team that wouldn't score a lot of points and has a bad run defense. Uh, and it wasn't the team that he played his whole career for, and then was like dumped by and how about, how about the, giants? the giants adam yeah yeah okay yeah if you were playing the giants where it's like okay the browns are just going to run the ball a thousand times the giants aren't going to score a lot of points the only thing that's really got me excited about watson is the fact that he's i just like the fact i like the narrative uh, i think he's going to want to you know ball out against the uh again sorry I, he's going to want to play very well against the texans and uh yeah, I don't know. And he's and he is Deshaun Watson. He is obviously like an incredible quarterback. Any worry about the just the rust, you know, not playing in two? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, see how bad he looked in the preseason? <laughs> yeah, look, if this is any normal week and Deshaun Watson's been playing all season long, he's probably a top five quarterback. But, you know, because of the situation, it's it's QB 12 for me this week. So low end starting quarterback. Oh, uh, we guys, we have to give bad advice to this person. Man, his mom. Come on. Her mom. <laughs> You bench Brady for Mike White. Um, I don't even know what the bad advice is there. Yeah, uh, I would absolutely start Tom Brady. Uh, I would start Brady over White. I would, but man, against Minnesota, <laughs> I actually have yeah. them back, to back this week. So that that just tells you what you need to know about Tom Brady. Not overly excited. <laughs> 
struggled against the Saints uh, a yeah, ton as well. So, uh, but I do have Brady one spot higher. They've had pretty similar careers. It's not an easy question here. And who would you bench? Would you bench Garrett Wilson, AJ Brown, or Amonra St. Brown? You're going to start Justin Jefferson. So I guess uh, Con Case needs three out of four. Fortunately, yes. Wilson's got to go on the bench. Yep. Oh, man. Sorry. I'm Mention, seeing your Jets. Mention all of my Jets. Jeez. Uh, and you know what? I know you were trying to make a little funny comment there, Adam, about uh, Mike White and Tom Brady having similar careers. But Mike White's jersey is in the Hall of Fame. Is Don't it? about it. Yeah. For what? From one of, the, one of the games he had last year. I forgot. Maybe it was like, most yards in your first start ever. I it would so oh, that could be so his yeah, his jersey is in the hall of fame, actually. Oh, that's fine. I'm sure Brady has nothing in the hall of fame. No, uh, no, no. <laughs> would you start Devontae Parker tonight or Mostert Warren or Taysom Hill? Warren. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yep. I like Jalen Ward. Kamara or Jeff Wilson and Myers or Mac Hollins. That is uh very close here. Jeff Wilson, revenge narrative, but a really tough matchup. Uh, I have them back-to-back. Kamara's one spot higher. It is the opposite for me. I will go with Wilson, just barely. But I do like this uh, this double. Re- it's like the most intense revenge game because you were literally just with that team, and then you yeah. throw on top of it Mike McDaniel, and I'm sure he's going to get into Kyle Shanahan's head. Like This is going to be like this is a fun game. I'm excited for it. It, you know, it's basically revenge week, right? If you look right. up and down the rankings, there are so many revenge <laughs> narratives this week. It's crazy. Yeah. This is the one I'm most in on. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out if there was any time where the Netherlands like wronged the United States. We could maybe get them in on the revenge narrative, but I don't, I'm not aware of anything, but I'm not like a history guy. Adam, uh, you got to break the tie. Who are you going with, Camara yeah. or Wilson? Camara. I don't know. Am I really going with Camara? I'm not really thrilled about that. Same. Um, do I have to break the tie? <laughs> no, I mean, you know, you, you did just say 10 minutes ago that you're feeling really definitive today. You've got all the answers. So, that was so. before our, I wasn't. <laughs> it's okay. I, I can switch because I'm starting Kamara in two leagues. So who am I to say? <laughs> I'm going to start, <laughs> I'm gonna start Wilson. No, I mean, it, it's close enough. It's close enough. You know. Yeah, I'm going to start Wilson. I just, I don't think the Saints are going to do a lot of scoring in this game. You do have Mark Ingram back too, which could be really frustrating near the goal line. Could be. So if they even get there, I'll, I'll take um, I'll take uh, Jeff Wilson. All right, Swift, Curtis Samuel, or George Pickens? Hmm. Half PPR. Um, yeah, I think Swift and Pickens is really close. Yeah, I man, both are really are fun games too. I think I lean with Pickens against the Falcons. I do too. I have a question. I don't know if you guys know this. So Darius Slayton, I'm seeing now, is sick, mispractice with an illness. Um, has what? How come there hasn't been one COVID case this year? Are they just? Do we not have protocols anymore? I'm serious. Like, are they just like it's just an illness now? I don't know. But there hasn't been a single guy who's missed the game with COVID. Isn't that weird? Yeah, I mean. Weird. Maybe they are just kind of listing it as illness because I've seen a few of those pop up throughout the season, you know, missing practice and stuff with illness. But yeah, I don't think anyone's missed a game. No, there's still oh, well, Harris missed the game with an illness, but it might have been just yeah. been an illness that I've not heard the word COVID <laughs> once this yeah. season in, for the football world. I don't know. I think it's just been regular illnesses, just stomach bugs and stuff. <laughs> it's still happening in the NBA, though. Like I know some players, you know. Uh, oh Nicole, yeah, Nicole Jokic uh, missed yeah. the games with, with. Yeah, the Knicks. The Knicks stole a one. Uh, stole a win. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Adam, another uh, another close no cigar game last night. Not even, not even for a second that I think they were going to win. Not even uh, a second. The game was tied with like thirty seconds. Left. And Giannis fouled out, and I was like, "There's no chance." Uh, <laughs> would, would you start Boyd or Mac Hollins this week? Uh, I would go with. I would take the shot on Mac Hollins. I would too. Boyd's been so underwhelming regardless. You got to score you got to score that goal. Adam, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> you got to score that goal. I mean, what a blunder there by Germany. Just gave it right away. Yeah. Oh man. They're playing terrible so far. Who, Germany? Just like in the World Cup in general. Oh, every time I look, they're like, you know, <laughs> they, like not to score basically. And it's 1-0. I just say nil. Uh PBR, three receivers and a flex. Okay, that's a lot of names. Who are we going with here? 
three wide receivers. Uh, Pittman, Watson, and Pickens for me. Pittman, Watson, and Pickens. Mine is Pittman, Watson, and Burks. And who's your flex? Uh, the flex is going to be Jalen Warren. Same for me. All right. Um, Warren, Rashad White, Miles Sanders. It's definitely one of those mm. if-then situations. Yeah. I wouldn't even think – I wouldn't hesitate for five seconds to start Rashad White if Leonard Fournette doesn't play. I mean, he's just sure. – He's going to be better than every other waiver wire running back this week. He's going to be better than Pierce. He's going to be you know, better, I should say, ranked higher. He's going to be ranked higher than all the questionable guys, Miles Sanders included. So White has has that path to being the guy. But if Fournette plays, then what are we looking at here? I, I think I would go with Sanders. I still lean towards Warren just because I'm, I'm still on the end that thinks that it's more of a – at best, 60 40 for Warren and Snell. Okay. Um, yeah, hit the like button, everybody. Is it crazy to start Pittman over Debo Samuel? No, uh, I don't think it's crazy. No, I have them pretty mm-hmm. closely ranked. I think Debo is a few spots higher, uh, but the Colts are big underdogs in that game against the Cowboys, likely chasing points. You could talk yourself into it. I, I would go with Debo personally, but it's, it's not crazy. I would assume that he's scoring more points per game than Debo. Um, let me see. I mean, I'll, I'll look that up. What do you guys think? Pittman or Debo? Who's scoring more points per game? Uh, it might be Debo. In full PPR, it's, it's probably Pittman. It is Pittman. <laughs> he is wide receiver 19. Debo is wide receiver 21. Pittman has scored uh, six tenths of a point more per game than Debo Samuel in a really bad year for wide receivers. I, I can't express this enough. It has been, it has been bad. Let, let me read you the top wide receivers per game and tell me when you get to the point where you're just not even, not sure if you're going to start these guys week to week. I actually think I know where it is. Diggs, Cup, whatever. Jefferson, Tyreek, Devontae Adams, DeAndre Hopkins, Jamar Chase, Jalen Waddell. Marquise Brown, that's an interesting one. We'll we'll, we'll eliminate him for now. Michael Thomas, Amonra St. Brown, C.D. Lamb, T. Higgins. Definitely starting all those guys. Amari Cooper? I think he's must start. Yeah. Even before Watson was back, I think he was must start. If he has a bad game on the road, I am just going to like... Just got to take your lumps with it. (laughs) A.J. Brown? Yeah. Yeah, must start. Christian Kirk? He has been for me at the very least a flex. So, yeah, I, I think that's the one where if top 24 wide receiver is the cutoff, there were definitely weeks where I didn't have Kirk inside my top 24. So that that's right. probably where it gets a little iffy. But when you see him that, that he's 16th per game, it actually makes you realize you should probably just start Christian Kirk. Yeah. I am a little concerned about him this week if, if he gets Okuda, but I, I don't think it'll be a huge thing. Um, that was the same way how I felt about Olave Adam, because I know you've, You've kind yeah. of like wavered on him a little bit the past month or so, but he, I think he's still top 20 in points per he's game at wide receiver. 20. So yeah. So. I think, I think right now, like Kirk is, a, is basically a must start lock it. I'm always going to start. Yeah. Godwin is 18. He's a lot. He's a lock. Mm-hmm. Now, as soon as we get to 19 and beyond, I think I'm more like, there's a few guys in here that I'm more confident in, but Pittman, Olave, Debo, Mike Evans, Ayuk, Jacoby Myers, Metcalf, there aren't that many guys anymore, you know? Yep. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's, uh, we don't have a ton of time left. I don't feel like I haven't answered enough questions. So let's go rapid fire here, answer as many as we can for the time being. Uh, Montgomery or DK Metcalf at Flex? DK. I, I would go with DK, yeah. Okay. Gabe Davis or Traylon Burks, half PPR? I'm going with Gabe. Me too. Mm, Traylon for me. Oh. I know. I know. Yeah, I don't know why I reacted like that. Gabe Davis is uh, mega, mega frustrating. <laughs> uh, I would not start Pierce or White over Aaron Jones, would you? No. Mm-mm. Even all the things I just said about Rashad White, if Fournette is out, I'd, I'd start Jones. Jones has, I think, 18 or more PPR fantasy points in like four of the last five games that he didn't leave with an injury. So he's been pretty damn solid. Garrett Wilson or Lockett and Gibson and or Warren. 
I'm going to go with Garrett mm-hmm. Wilson, uh, but it is pretty close. And huh, there's a lot of moving parts in that second question. Gibson yeah. has to play because he <laughs> did not practice today. You need Najee Harris not to play. Um, let's say, okay, if Najee is out and Gibson plays, I would still go with Gibson. If Obviously, if Gibson's out, then yeah, I would go with Warren. I really like, I'm, I'm just like the super high person on Warren this week. So um, yeah, but all this is assuming that Najee is not playing. So Palmer or Wilson? Wilson for me. Wilson. I'll take Palmer if Mike Williams is out, but all right. I'll be in the minority there. Gus Edwards, Jonathan Taylor, Pacheco, and Pollard. Give me two. Standard score. Standard scoring. Today is standard mm-hmm. scoring day. Mm-hmm. Well, that does make things like Taylor for sure. Yeah. Yep. Wow. You've got some standard scoring heroes in this question. <laughs> sure, like Pacheco, <laughs> Pacheco coming off a game with 20 yeah. carries. Man, I don't know if it's going to happen again, but I, I still lean with Tony Pollard. I, I know that Zeke is going to be using the red zone, but Pollard still had 20 touches last week. I think he's going to get 15 plus at least. He could score from a long way out. We've seen that multiple times. I would take JT and Pollard. JT for sure. I'm okay with going with Pacheco over Pollard. Kirk has been solid and he plays in the slot. He won't see Jeff Okuda. He does play in the slot, but he doesn't play exclusively in the slot. And he does saw a lot of Marlon Humphrey last week. And it was a big reason, I think, why Zay Jones went off and Christian Kirk did not. But uh, I think the fact that he plays a slot certainly helps him be a little bit more matchup proof. I just think you look at what he's done this year. He's basically been a matchups guy. This should be a good matchup though. Does that make you nervous about Zay Jones then, Adam, that he could see? No. Uh, oh, um, no, because I don't, I don't think Okuda is going to shadow Zay Jones. Uh, so, and I don't know that I may be giving Okuda a little bit too much credit. Okay. Yeah. That's a good point, though. All right, 12-man, half PPR. We need a running back and a flex. The running back is going to be... Uh, if Fournette is out... Actually, regardless, I'll go with Rashad yeah. White. And then for the flex, I will go with Christian Watson. Watson. Yeah. Now, if Same. Mixon's out, you know, you throw P. Ryan in there, I guess, but... Um, it looks like Mixon is going to go. Yeah, I think Mixon's going to play. Yeah. And then a DST, the Eagles against the Colts, the Commanders at the Giants. This, oof, man, what a tough one. Seahawks getting the Rams. Oof. I, I have the Seahawks as a top two defense this week. Yeah, it's tough to not go with the Eagles defense, but the Seahawks. <sighs> I have no idea. That is such a coin toss. I think I would go with the Eagles. All year long, the Colts have just been a brilliant matchup for DSTs. Uh, you get a lot of sacks and a lot of interceptions from Matt Ryan. Uh, but uh, it, it, totally valid to go with the Seahawks there. Okay, start two in PPR. Brian Robinson, Rashad White, or Damian Pierce? In, in PPR, I would go with Rashad White. If Gibson is out, I would go Rashad White and Robinson. If Gibson plays, that's really close. Uh, if Gibson plays, I would go White and Pierce. Bam! Or Jacoby Myers. Uh, mm. I would, you know, my only hesitation with Bam is I think everyone's just getting excited that he's going to kind of get the same workload he did last week. I think there's a chance that James Robinson could be active if Michael Carter is out, and then they just kind of have this three-headed mess of a situation. Did you see the whole draft pick thing though? What's up? They owe him a they owe the Jaguars a fifth round pick if he rushes for 175 or 185 more yards. They owe they owe no. They owe them a sixth round pick. If gotcha. he rushes for 185 more yards, it becomes a fifth round pick. Oh, so sneaky. I don't think they're gonna play him. Sneaky snake. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna go with Myers. I I think I would still go Myers. Especially if catches count. In non PPR, maybe you can convince me on night, but otherwise I'll go Myers. You know the Vikings have a great run defense. They really do. Yep. Mm-hmm. <sighs> okay. I've got Pacheco, White, Swift, and P. Ryan. Should I drop P. Ryan for the other sub RBs or keep in case Mixon is out? Drop P. Ryan for. for so would that include like Jalen Warren and. Yeah. 
Um, like P. Ryan obviously is, yeah. we've seen, he's a high-end handcuff. Yeah. He's definitely one you want. Um, but you don't have like great options for this week. Uh, you know, I think Pacheco and White are fine. I think they're both like low end RB2s. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I, I think you could go either way. Like, even if Najee Harris got hurt, you know, I think Jalen Warren would be really good too. I mean, obviously, Najee's a little bit banged up now. If he misses multiple weeks, I think Warren could be fine. Um, I, I would make the swap P Ryan for Warren. It's it's fine. Unless you have Nixon, of course, which I don't I don't think you do. So Camara, White, Watson, or Pacheco, who are you starting? Gosh, am I really gonna say Camara? <laughs> it's uh not me. Feels young. I'm gonna go white if Fournette does not mm-hmm. play, and I'm gonna go Watson if Fournette does play. I am doing that too, Adam. I would rather bite the bullet with Christian Watson than <laughs> sit there and get angry over Camara. Yeah. Honestly. Right. Um, I, I would go Kamara if Fournette plays, and, and I would go White if Fournette is out. And you can make that call because, again, it's Monday Night Football for both of those guys. And how many times are we going to say if Fournette is out on this show, right? I mean, that has been the theme of, of today's show. And they've only had one practice this week. Uh, so that's kind of also annoying. Oh, we answered this one. You guys said Metcalf. That's right. Um, let's pick two here in full PPR. Myers, Lazard, Hunt. DeAndre Carter, Gabe Davis, or Jalen Warren? Oh, man. I don't want to ruin your weekend, but I think I'm going to go with the Thursday guys. Ah, that Myers is boring. I'm going to go with Gabe Davis and Jalen Warren. Yeah, those are the two I was thinking of. Yeah. Cool. Bench one, Miles Sanders, Damian Pierce, Rashad White. Ooh, let's see if uh... – oh, never mind. I thought this was a Chargers injury report. It is not. Uh, anyway, what do you guys have here? Bench one of these players. Uh, it's going to be Gus for me. Yeah. I lean toward. Yeah. Same. It, it's really close with Gus and Damian Pierce. Yeah. Uh, I don't think Dobbins is going to be back this week, but mm-hmm. yeah, even if he doesn't play, I, I would still, I would bench Gus. Should I play Pacheco or Devonte Smith at the flex? Half PPR. <laughs> mm. It's just a, I like this. I and mean, you have AJ Brown. I, I, so I get why you don't want to um, lock yourself in with both of them, but I'm okay. Given the matchup with uh, Devonta Smith. I'm all right. Yeah, it is a great matchup. And since uh, oh, Dallas Goddard has gone down, what'd you What's say? Everybody, why does everybody think Tennessee is a great matchup? Why have I not opened everyone's eyes? They, they are since their bye week in their last six games, they are third in yards per play. They just held the Chiefs and the Bengals to 20 points. T. They Higgins held... had a monster game against them. Who? T. Higgins had a monster game against T. them. T. Higgins did, yeah, I know. But but some some guys do. See, they see the most pass attempts in the NFL. Um, the Eagles don't do that. They've thrown 28 or fewer passes in five straight games. That might change. Maybe they will throw more because the Titans do have a very good run defense. Uh, but yeah. the Titans have really turned a corner defensively. I can't necessarily look at the season long numbers. I'm going to start both Eagles wide receivers personally, uh, because I think you're probably going to get at least one good game there. <laughs> Maybe two. Uh, but I, I think I, I look, nobody really bought it. I brought it up on today's show and nobody bought it, but th- I, I find some s- disturbing trends for the Eagles wide receivers. And mainly just because Jalen hurts is barely throwing again, six straight games with 28, 25 to 28 passes in those six games. Devonte Smith's got 50 or fewer yards in five of them. A.J. Brown has 67 or fewer yards in five of them, but he scored six touchdowns. The, the big counter is, well, yeah, but uh, Dallas Goddard only missed two of them, and I get that's totally true. Uh, but I just want to say, I, I, I didn't think the Titans were a great matchup for the uh, Bengals last week, and, you know, they, and I wasn't sure, but they came through again. I have to start giving them credit. I think they're a really good defense now. Stop me if you heard this before, but A.J. Brown, Revenge game. Uh, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're so are we cool with that? Going with the two receivers? Yes. Yeah. Montgomery or Jamal Williams at flex. I'm still going Montgomery. Uh, yeah, that's rough though. This is about as excited as I get about David Montgomery. I mean, he's <laughs> he's getting a lot of touches, and the Packers have such a bad run defense, so I'll take him. Dalvin Cook or Montgomery. Oh, I'm going down. I'm still going with Dalvin. Yeah, same. 
Lamar Jackson or Trevor Lawrence? I don't th- uh, you know, I think I have. Lo- I think I have Trevor Lawrence one spot higher than Lamar this week. Yeah, I do. So I'm still going with Lamar, although it's weird he keeps popping up with these random weekly injuries. Yeah, he was back at practice today, but he had the quad yesterday. Still has his quad, from what I understand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, listen, we only got to 100-something likes. But it is December. It's the first time I can say it. Happy holidays. It's holiday month. I think I think November 30th is too soon. December 1st is fine to say happy holidays. Someone said it to me yesterday. I was a little, <laughs> a little put off by it. But uh, we're going to give away a Paramount Plus month anyway. So comment your Twitter handle and our guy, Shafee T., who has, I think, nailed it in a little bit on the YouTube polls. He's got to step it up. Um, he'll give out a, a free month of Paramount+. Plus. Get this comment your Twitter handle. And you can vote on the new poll, which is better than the old one. USA versus Netherlands. Who wins? Netherlands or USA by a million? And, of course, I'm going to select Netherlands because I have to be honest. But USA is winning 76% of the votes. So. <laughs> You know, Adam, how about you try taking care of a Pomeranian and making YouTube polls at the same time? Let's see that little po- Let's see the Pomeranian, Schaefer. That's one of the cutest <laughs> dogs I've ever seen. That was like a freaking cute dog. He, he's downstairs now. Oh. He's downstairs, yeah. Had a very time cute. out. <laughs> you, you heard him. He's, he can be, he's a menace. He's small, but he's a menace. Yeah, it sounded like, it sounded like you got your hands full there. <laughs> um, all right, Terry, you have a dog? You have a dog, right? No, I do not. I do not. I don't know why I thought that. You said that with so much confidence. Yeah, you have a dog, right? (laughs) It's just three dogs. No, my my kids run around like dogs. You start seeing like run around in background of videos. So yeah, they don't eat up. I don't. They don't eat off the floor. Any any cats? Oh, one did yesterday. Oh no. (laughs) (laughs) Any cats? No, I'm not a cat person. Oh, well, I would like a dog, but I, know, I, I would know. be the one that ha- would have to take care of the dog. That would not be, <laughs> I would have no help. Right well, now, uh, one of my kids is very into scaring the hell out of my cat, and it's a big problem. <laughs> so that, that's like just love. It's his favorite thing to do throwing things at the cat, just running after the cat. And it's like, uh, stop doing that. But it's not, nice. <laughs> that's not good. It's not good. It's not good. All right, a few more questions Mike White or Dak Prescott? <laughs> I'm not going to overthink this one. I'll go with Dak. Dak, yeah. Frank, this isn't true, is it? This this oh. is... No, don't say that. <laughs> that <can't be> <laughs> For multiple reasons, I would have to do an emergency baseball podcast right now. <laughs> <laughs> that can't be true. I would just break my heart. Uh, so much check Twitter. It's not. Um, it, okay, not, not chance, cool. There's a chance he could sign next week during winter meetings, though. Apparently, that's going to happen. So. With a team or with the Giants? Uh, with a team, but okay. it seems like the Giants and the Yankees are the only ones showing uh, real interest right now. We'll see. Oh, we got the Pomeranian. All right, let's let's answer. Let, oh, look, at this. look at that dog. That's like the cutest dog I've ever seen. Nice. He's thirteen. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that dog is so freaking cute. That almost makes me want to get a dog, but then you start to have to walk them, and I'm not into that. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, a few more questions here, and then we're going to head out. Knox, Higby, or Fant? I do not mm. want to start Tyler Higby, man. He has just – he's not running as many routes. He's not playing snaps. Obviously, the quarterback situation is terrible. I think I would go with Dawson Knox. Yeah, the only thing New England's been kind of vulnerable against is tight ends, oddly enough. So, yes, Dawson Knox. As a McCaffrey and Jacobs manager, who should I be more worried about? I already picked up Zamir White. Technically, I don't think either, but McCaffrey. Yeah. yeah, McCaffrey's dealt with so much stuff in the past. He's got the knee going on. Uh, Jacobs was questionable last week, and he just had like a career <laughs> performance. So. Yeah, they they tried to keep him out during the game though, and he reaggravated it, and he was like, "Nope, I'm playing." And then he won them the game. I would be more worried long term about Jacobs because you could just see a scenario where they don't where they shut him down. Um, the, and the other problem is you did the right thing. You picked up Samir White. You're not gonna handcuff McCaffrey. I don't I don't know that there's a huge upside in that personally. But we don't even know who it would be. Jamal Williams or Damian Pierce in standard PPR. Jamal. <laughs> standard PPR. Jamal. <laughs> uh yes, I'm gonna go with Jamal regardless of format. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> okay, so they got me a little bit on the Aaron Judge news. This one I'm not quite believing. Stone Cold Steve Austin to become the Texans head coach. Last one. I mean, I would love that. <laughs> Deshaun Watson or Justin Fields if he plays? Uh, you know, I haven't even thought about Justin Fields because I don't. I just don't think there's a chance that he plays. Um, mm-hmm. mm, if he does play, uh, I'd start him. I think I'd start him. Yeah, it's Fields I for me if he think plays. So yeah, yeah, that's fine. I don't think he's gonna play though. Okay, don't drop Leonard Fournette, but you can play White. We uh, want to thank you all for hanging out with us. Much appreciated. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Good luck tonight in the Bills Patriots game. Fantasy football today in five. We'll have the recap for you as soon as it's over. And we'll talk to you tomorrow on FFT with Starter Sit for the NFC home games. Adios.